In this video, we'll cover how to make scenes, and they actually have a scene where one wall is not visible. So you finish the model of your bedroom, and you like the way it looks, you've furnished it, you've colored it, you're ready to go, and you would like to make perhaps a video to show the client. So one of the first things we're gonna do is kind of set up some of our views, like looking kind of down like this a little bit would be kind of a good view. Notice my ceiling tag is, uh, is not visible, that the eye is not, open there so if I turn it back on it becomes visible but uh, this is gonna be a good uh, beginning scene let's say so we go to our scenes here and we add a new scene and we go ahead and give it a name now this one defaults to scene one the first scene of this project I'm gonna call it ISO you can call it overview whatever whatever you prefer name wise as long as you understand what the scene is you're looking at scene one is a little too generic the other one would be to kind of get inside the space. So I'm going to, going to use this position camera. And we'll click inside here, let's say from this view, let's say. And uh, maybe change my field of view. Camera. Field of view. And I can either click and drag my, my little cursor. Or I can just type in, when I do camera field of view, I can just type in, 44 mm and that gives me something to look at and then I can just use the look around tool to maybe look a little bit better maybe position myself in a, in a different area maybe I want to see more of the entryway into the to the bedroom something along this lines would be pretty good kind of again arrange myself a little bit I like to be able to see a, a good kind of angle of the scene here and then I notice my ceiling is not visible. Now that I'm inside, I do want this ceiling to be uh, visible in this particular view. So go to my tiles, put tag on, and uh, then I'll make a new scene. So again, hit the plus, add scene, and uh, let's call this one bedroom. One of the other views that we might want to have is a section cut view looking down like a plan view you might find in a set of drawings. So I'm going to zoom extents here and I'm going to create a section cut plane. Here's a section plane tool. Click on that and you see that depending on what surface I want to move against uh, depends on what the color of that tool becomes. I would like to look straight down. I'm looking for a plan view, so I'll click here. Click straight down, and it'll have a section name, depending how many sections you've made in the model, depending what the number is. Uh, in this case, I, I'm not going to worry about it. Maybe if I want to name it plan, I can, but I'm just going to use this one plane. I'll click OK. I click the top of the walls, and that's not where I want to end up necessarily. So I, I typically want to be halfway up the room. Most section planes for plan views are at the four foot line, so it's halfway of standard room height. So I'm going to select this perimeter, use the move tool or type M for move. I'm going to click here, I'm going to go down four feet. That's the halfway point for this model. I'm going to go ahead and look down at the model. So here's the, the down view, so or, the, or the look look at top view of the model. So I'm looking down at it. I want to get rid of the perspective. I go to camera, take parallel projection. Notice that all perspective is off now. I don't want to see this edge of the section plane. So I'm going to take that off. But I do want infill. I want the section fill to happen. I'd like to have these walls to be black, so I'm going to click on infill. And that looks pretty good. One last thing I think is to get rid of the furniture. Although I could keep it, I would prefer to, to show this as just a straight plan view. So go to my tags, making the furniture tag not visible. And that really looks pretty good. So now I need to create a new scene. If I update this scene, there'll be a problem. I want my bedroom scene, I want my ISO scene. So I'll make a new scene. Go to Scene Manager, have a new scene. I'm going to call it Plan. And then if I click between the different views, there's a bedroom, the ISO, the plan, 
the scene changes and the tags change as well with what's necessary. I'm going to click on ISO scene now. I, I like to come look inside. I like to be able to come from this angle. I think this would be a good wall to maybe hide. And I can look from this angle and see inside this way, almost like a dollhouse type look. Well, to do that, I need to get into my wall component. So I go to my wall component. So I'm inside my wall component now. Notice the rest of the spaces get kind of grayed out or greened out. Um, and then I want to separate this wall. Now, the first thing I, I'm going to pick up on is that the whole top of this wall component is together. So I've got to break into two different sections. I need to be able to grab just this one wall portion and make it basically not visible. So I'm going to double click on the top here. I'm inside the wall component. I'm going to draw some lines from here to here and from here straight down to here. So I'm making these lines to separate this wall from its adjacent walls. That looks pretty good. And then I need to make this wall over here a separate component. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to select this wall. And notice I'm doing a window select. I'm not doing a crossing. A crossing gets too many walls. I'm doing window select. So I'm going from here to here, from left to right, right click, make component. I'm going to call it you know, wall two or something like that. Something that lets me know this is different from the regular wall component, create. So now this wall two component is inside of the wall component, but I can put it on a different tag and then it will also be able to be visible or not visible. I can control the visibility. All right, let's make a new tag. Click the plus. I'm going to call it wall two. And I'm going to select this wall. It's already selected. Just one click. Two clicks get me inside the component. I don't want to do that. I'm, this is now that now I'm inside the wall two component. I, I don't want to do that. So just click once to select it. So I'm inside the walls component, but I'm not inside the wall two. And then right click entity info. And go ahead and put it instead of the untagged, put it on wall two. Let's try this out. If I make wall two not visible, the wall goes away. Ah, but I see something else going on. The picture frame is not going to go away. I mean, it's going to look very strange to look inside the room and have the back side of a picture frame staring at me. Plus, it's really in the way, right? It's not seeing the whole the side of the room very well. Close this component. Select the picture frame component and put that also in wall two, or you can use outliner and move that picture frame into wall two. Either way, we'll make that picture frame not be visible. So we can also right click entity info and put this picture frame in wall two, or if I use outliner, I'll show you the outliner technique here. If I use outliner and select it, that's my picture frame. And I can put it into the wall two component, which is inside walls. If you see this walls one here, if you just click this little down triangle, you can see all the stuff that's inside walls. Things like this door and this bifold door and this door over here, they're all inside there. But wall two is there. And because it's not visible, it's hidden. So I'm just going to click and drag this into this wall two. Click and drag this into wall two. And it's gone. That's probably the better way of doing it. Let's go back to ISO. Notice I'm back in ISO and the wall shows up again and the picture shows up again. But the picture is inside the wall two component, but it's also in the furniture tag. So it's inside wall two tag and the furniture tag. I can go here, I can make the furniture go away, but the wall be visible. Or I can make the wall two go away and the picture frame goes too. So the picture frame's in the furniture tag, but it's also within the wall two component so, and the wall two component is in the wall two tag. So that, that kind of nesting is kind of interesting. So you can have some variability. So I'd make the wall two tag not visible. And let's set up the scene looking sideways. Now, the way my model is oriented, this is the view I'm going to want. And since I'm looking sideways, I can put the ceiling back on. And let's make a scene. Go to the scene. And we'll make a new scene. Let's call it side. So I have a side view, an ISO view, 
a bed bedroom view, looking inside the bedroom, and a plan view. Well, one thing I notice is that these walls are white for some reason, and this is blacked in. It wasn't that way when I made it. What happened differently? Well, when I made the side view, look what happened to the side of these walls. See, they became kind of hollow because I basically took the, the end of that wall off. What I can do now is I can just draw that wall back in and they'll become solid. When I go to this plan view, when you use this display section fill, it needs to have an enclosed shape. So for example, this shape is enclosed. These walls are enclosed. They have all sorts of sides to them and they, they enclosed and blocked off. But these here, once I got rid of this wall as enclosing, they, they don't close anymore. They're, they're, they're basically holes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the side view, the side view tab, and double click into the wall components. And then what I'll do is I'm just gonna make a rectangle. Well, actually, I could probably just draw a line here, but let's try, draw, try drawing a line, see what happens. Well, that does it. By drawing that line, it completed the shape. But if, let's say, if that didn't get completed, I could easily also just do a rectangle and click from here, click, and go to the other side of the wall over here. Zoom up. Click. And that would close it off, too. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's click on the plan view again. And look what happened. The walls are now blacked in because I've enclosed the, the wall surface. Bedroom. Side. At this point, if I want to color the wall ends, I could. It, I don't think I need to. I think this is fine. ISO. Fantastic. I've got all my scenes set up. I'm ready to go. I'm just now going to put in the order I want. I, I don't want to move around too much. Plan, side, bedroom, ISO. And then I'll go back to plan again. That sounds like a good video orientation, so let's try it out. On the sides here, I can move up and down. So if I click on the side scene and use the up or downs, I can put an order that way. Those little, these two arrows. Or I could right click and move left and move right. I think this might be it. Let's see, plan, side. It's gonna be bedroom and ISO. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the bedroom this way. Just right click and we can say move left. And so it does it automatically. I'm going to click on the plan view again. I'm going to just try this out, see how this animation plays. Go to view, animation, play. And let's see how this thing works. If as I go through it, I like the way the flow is and it's not moving around too much, then I think it'd be a good project to go. And we can now export the animation out. This looks pretty good. I don't have any problems with it. I'm going to stop my animation and we'll hit the plan view again, the plan scene tab. Then I'm going to go to go to my view, animation, settings and double check them. This is where I want the scene transitions because I want to switch from one to the other. Two seconds means that it takes two seconds to go from one scene to the next. And then a delay means it'll pause one second on the scene. I think this is good for now. We have in class done different settings where you even have no scene delay at all. It's one continuous movement. But in this particular project, I think this is good. And it's going, it's pretty simple, so it, it's a good amount. I think we will leave this for the defaults. Don't forget to save this project now in case something happens. So before I make an animation, I want to just see how the scenes look. Uh, for example, this plan is, is a good size, but maybe I can use zoom extents and make it a little bit more yeah, that looks better. It fills up most of the screen. The client wants to see that. The background is not that important. Click on the side. If you click on plan again, well, it's the same size again. Remember, when we do any changes to this, we need to either right click up here and update, or over here in scene manager, update. Now that we've updated the scene, this will stay this large size. 
looking at the side view, I would do the same thing. Zoom extents. Oh, that looks much better. Right click update or click here, update. Notice that this is, and if this comes up, in this case, we want them all to update, all those pieces. That looks pretty good. The bedroom scene really doesn't really update. I mean, I don't want to zoom extents because that will take me out of the building. That's not what I want. Um, the way this is looking, this is correct. This, this perspective kind of used inside will work with just however you decide to set it up. We did that wide angle view, so that works pretty well. ISO looking down. If I do zoom extents, all right, and then update, and that gives us the whole view. All right, so we're set to go. Let's hit plan. We've looked at our animation settings. We've tried it out. We've made this all zoomed extent, so we know we're pretty good. Let's go to file export animation. And we file export animation. It's an MP4 file. Yes, I'm going to put it in my skid folder. Fantastic. That way I have it. Let's look at my options one more time just to make sure. I looked at the options in SketchUp. Let's look at the options in the export. Uh, whatever resolution it's going to come out is, is going to be fine. Uh, I think the student version only has one resolution, but the HD one, so it should be good. Uh, the frame rate, I like 24. That's fine. And in this case, I want it to loop back to the starting scene. Sometimes we want that. Sometimes we don't. Uh, I think in this case, it would be nice to end and begin at the same spot, that plan view looking straight down. The anti-alias rendering, I always like to choose. Uh, and then options, that's that's up to you. I think what will happen is every time you do an animation, it's going to ask you about this options. Uh, typically, this will be this is something you do kind of once at the beginning, and it's going to be the same thing uh, throughout. I'm going to click OK here. Uh, that name looks good. It's an MP4 file. I'm going to hit Export and let this thing export out the animation. And the one thing I would do to wrap it up is to just review that animation, make sure that indeed is ran well and there's no glitches. It's always been double check and make sure, and uh, if necessary, rerun it, redo the animation, re-export it out. If, if there was some problems, fix it in the model, find out what's up. But we've done a lot of steps here. We should be pretty good. And uh, then just save this file.